Recently, I've discovered a new trading card game in which my curiosity took a turn. I was enticed by it when I had noticed the game introduced stories that everybody was familiar with. Stories in the form of Grimm's Fairy Tales, Camelot, and much more. It is a product that was made in Japan and recently got imported to the States. I do enjoy a sense of culture, especially if it comes from Japan. I'm intrigued by the likes of video games, anime, and other forms of entertainment. So I decided to get information about this game. So I went to ask at my local game shop along with my friends. The game is Force of Will. I was told if I had played Magic the Gathering before, and I of course had. They had stated to me the mechanics are similar to the game with some differences. In the game of Magic, your game is compromised with a deck having lands being your mana resources, spells, and summons. But in this game, you have two decks and a ruler. One deck is your willstones being your mana, and the other is your spells and summons. On the field is your ruler who can send to a superior form. Why do I mention this? It is because the filtering of the cards is efficient. On every turn, you are guaranteed mana resources versus having to draw hoping you will get your mana. Also, you start with a life total of 4,000, which is essentially 40. And in Magic, it depends which format you are playing. Keep in mind, this game is pretty new. It came in the US on 2014. Meaning the format is standard and all sets released to date are playable. Magic has been around since 1994 and has gained a renowned following with its popularity still growing. For Magic's timeline, it gives access to many cards to look for and multiple formats of play, allowing certain sets and conditions. Now back to the mechanics of gameplay. Your beginning hand of magic consists of 7 cards, as for force of will, it is 5. The mulligan procedure is being debated in the game of magic, allowing you to do it multiple times but your hand decreases by 1 each time. The debate is to scry or reveal till you get something. For force of will, you have 1 mulligan allowing you to take away any amount of cards from your hand and get new ones as long as your beginning hand is 5. It should also be mentioned that both games have a max hand size of 7, along with the whole game. Both games have similar aspects in how the cards are played and where they go. Force of Will has one difference to Magic, which is present in Yu-Gi-Oh! Trap Cards. They're known as standby chance. You pay the cost and lay the card face down until conditions are met, causing activation. This is what makes the game diverse and stand out from the rest. By displaying different elements from various trading card games and implementing it. Now it should be questioned, why is this game gaining hype? It is because the game displays a form of uniqueness by giving former and new players a breath of fresh air. It can be noticed when you look at the back of these cards. Great detail went into them. It can be attested by the art of the cards, also the prestigious hollowing when you get a rare and random card. Other surprises come as well in the form of full arts and god packs. Each booster pack consists of 10 cards, and if you find 5 commons, you got yourself an additional rare. Magic is 15 cards. And to get a holographic, you have to be lucky. On the note of getting cards, if you want to play formats consisting of older cards in the game of Magic, you're going to be spending quite a bit. Competitive decks run in the hundreds, and to acquire certain cards is expensive and difficult to obtain. Yes, Force of Will does have some pricey cards, but that is because it is a luxury version of a certain card or it is high in demand, which doesn't necessarily mean you need that card to win. Now for the case of Force of Will, it is new and it has cards that are presumed to be broken and powerful. The game does run on tri benefits when you run certain resonators with certain cards, but Magic players can also see that some spells are considered overpowered even to the point that it beckons to a time that Magic used to have this but is now hard to reach. Even the coveted dual lands from Magic in essence show a significant presence in the form of Will Stones. This game is literally the dream now of things that once was, and this is an extraordinary feature. Many Magic and other card game players alike have converted. I for one am amongst them. This is due to its affordability and convenience. Its support though is not widely present, for it is not seen in retail stores. It can be found in local game shops, and the good news is, it is selling tremendously well and quick. To the point it has the recognition of having sanctioned tournaments and seeing a wide amount of play. It can probably be said that it will eventually be seen in retail stores as it is gaining popularity. So far a new set has been announced, making it a good sign for the future. I look forward to seeing more of this game and what it has to offer. As a card game player, this is my game of choice and has me sold. For a game so familiar and revolutionary by design, 
in given time, it will get the appeal it solely deserves.